Hi everybody, my name is Phoenix and today I'd like to talk about and kind of explore uh, the idea of what we live for. So I think it's, it's pretty broad and there might be a lot of different ideas on how, how one should live their life and why one should live their life. You know, different dreams, aspirations, ideas of fulfillment, pursuits of happiness, you know what I mean? But ultimately, I think that everybody's uh, way of life and way of living falls into two categories, predominantly. Um, on the one hand, you've got those that live towards comfort. You know, so in instead of being out and about and, and doing a lot of things which might be challenging, um, they might prefer to do things which are fun uh, within, their, within their range of comfort. They might prefer to live stable lives predictable lives, routine lives, and uh, you know, they, they won't be the most adventurous, risky, daring people. And it's not to say that they'll be completely, you know, in a bubble, because like, you know, the way I see it, everybody uh, is a mix of different things. You know, we all lean towards comfort to, to some extent, but on one hand, you've got those that lean towards comfort predominantly, and then on the other hand, you've got those that lean towards growth. And they're the ones that will seek out the challenge, seek out the confrontation and the contradictions in order to learn, in order to grow and evolve. You know, to those people that see growth, life's a game, and even if there's pitfalls, it's worth taking risks and potentially falling into those pitfalls every once in a while, as long as you get out of it stronger and wiser, you know. And these people, likewise, will appreciate comfort and, uh, and all of that, you know, a bit of routine, but predominantly the decisions they make and the, the kind of lifestyle that they maintain and develop will be towards growth. You know, so on the one hand, you might have someone that's happy just knowing what they know. You know, I've met a lot of people that are resistant to new knowledge and learning new methods, even if there's better strategies or ways of doing what they're doing and getting by, they're happy just knowing what they already know because it works for them and they don't need to know more. You know, to them that's extra work and it's unnecessary, too much work. They prefer to just do what's doing. It's working enough to get them by comfortably. And then you have those that are about bettering and maybe not so happy being in one spot for too long, being comfortable for too long. Uh, they want to keep striving for the next thing. And I think if you live in either one of these two uh, ends of the spectrum, two extremes, it can be quite unhealthy. If you're too much in a bubble, and like my brother, he's afraid to go out into the world because he is so fearful that people will hurt him and exploit him and use him, maybe with good reason. But with my brother at Severe, and he's in his 40s, and he, he never goes out of the house, and he's, he's lonely, um, an absolute hermit to a T. And you could say he's a, he's a bubble boy, sheltered from the world, um, because he's, he's completely in that zone of comfort. You know, he just has his routine of what he does every day in his, in his home with himself, and that's enough. Anything else is too scary, too confrontational, and too much risk. Um, then you have other people that their feet are never grounded, they're never stable, they're always head in the clouds or always out and about and acting on a whim and very impulsive and they don't have much order in their life and they can lead very chaotic lives with many great ups but also really deep pitfalls and downs and there could be a lot of turbulence. Uh, people can get lost in, in some of these lifestyles when they just throw it all to the winds and cross their fingers and leap constantly. Um, they can wind up anywhere because they're not really taking the reins or the steering wheel that much or that much at all or enough at all to uh, to make sure that they stay on course roughly. They just go anywhere because um, life's just like, hey, roll of the dice, which can go in your favor or it might land you into shit. So I think to go to either extreme, to live in a bubble or to live it in the roll of a dice can have dire consequences and can lead to a life unfulfilled and um, a life which is either restricted from reaching its full potential or completely devastated and steered away from reaching its full potential, you know. 
Um, so I think a balance, as usual, as, as you can see, one of my only few tattoos I have, besides the spade in my butt, because of all the shit I'd be dribbling, I just need to get a shovel there, and then that's complete. Um, the only other tats I've got is the yin and the yang, for the feminine and masculine, and it's all about balance at the end of the day. It's all about moving towards growth and looking to expand our knowledge base and skill base, looking for that challenge and looking to step up, step in the game. You don't really grow until you step outside of your comfort zone and push the barriers, you know, and move that line forward. It's the only way you grow. When they say whenever, you know, if you've got anxiety of going out with people, I have a friend that had anxiety, right? And she would keep to herself in a home a lot of the time and keep to a small base of friends that would come to see her and she would hardly go out. I mean, she'd go to some parties and stuff, but she was always really fearful and anxious around people. Um, and she lived in Perth to begin with. She went to Melbourne, no, Sydney, sorry, for just a couple of months and apparently there were so much more people there. It's like she was trying to swim through all these crowds and masses of people. Always, you know, a 24-7 subway, full of, trains full of people, buses full of people. There were so many people that she was just chucked into the deep end. You know what I'm saying? And when she came back to Perth, she actually found that her anxiety levels had reduced. And she found it much easier to be around people, to go out much more often without even feeling anxious. So there's one classic example right there of really throwing yourself in the deep end so that you can learn how to swim. I mean, literally, you wouldn't want to do that because you might drown. You don't want to uh, bite off more than you can chew. Put more on your plate than you can carry and buckle your back in. You know, so you've got to gradually push that line. In some cases, it might work to go to extremes, but it depends on the situation. So, it's all about balance. And the other point of this is that I think that because we, you know, once we understand that life is about growing and furthering our capacity and ability to enjoy the richness of life and to provide and receive more, and it's also about being comfortable and feeling secure and having enough order and routine and our feet on the ground in order to build up and main, keep things maintained and progress in a somewhat orderly fashion, instead of it just being sporadic and spontaneous all the time. Now once we realize that it's about these two approaches, then it doesn't really matter what happens to you in life. All of the bad things, all of the good things, all, all of the heartbreaks and the people stabbing you on the back and the best friends betraying you and all, all of your disillusionment and all of your regrets, all of your fears, mistakes, things you never did that you wish you did, things you, you did do and you wish you never did. All of it, you can see in a different light. And you can say, well, all the things I regret and I am upset about and I am fearful from, I can learn from this. And I know it's cliche and you've heard it all before, but you can learn from it. From every pitfall you can climb and during that process, you will learn not to fall into that same pitfall again and you will appreciate the parallel pleasure that that pain contrasts. It's all about contrast. You know, the more you challenge yourself and grow and work hard in a day and really push the barriers and exhaust your potential, the more that you can relax and let your hair down and enjoy the bliss of just doing nothing and relaxing in the comfort and secure, safe environment of your own home. You know, so I think the more we push either end, the more we appreciate the other end of the spectrum. The more time you spend inside, it might be a relief and a breath of fresh air to get out and socialize and completely mix things up and be really active. So when bad things happen, I, I think, you know, a lot of people, maybe people with depression, um, and you know, some say that depression is with you for your lifetime. And it never really goes away, you just get used to it. You get better at coping with it and its effects reduce in magnitude, you know, severity. But even if this is so, like I myself have had depression for years and it comes and goes in bouts and I'd agree, it, it never completely goes, you know. And little things can happen or a pile of little things cumulatively can happen that push me down and all of a sudden I'm, I'm underwater again, you know, and I'm 
thinking all these these horrible self-defeating thoughts and running these cycles and I feel myself stopping and losing my ambition from being progressive and you know it, it can be tough it can be a tough thing to deal with but at the end of the day I remind myself that you know life it isn't about always being happy you know it, it isn't about always feeling joy and contentment and peace and that's why I think people although they might be depressed or they have depressing circumstances and sad horrible things happen to them I think what makes it worse and what compounds the pain and the fears is that we have these high expectations of life and what it's meant to be like it's like everyone thinks that life is meant to be a joy ride and it's all about convenience and comfort and things coming with ease you know, and, and safety when if you set these high expectations and you think that that's what determines progress in life that if you're not happy if you're not safe and secure then you're not doing well in life and you should be sad if you think like this and you set these expectations you're only going to be disappointed and it's going to hit you harder when that bitter, bitter pill gets slammed down your throat you know when you smell the coffee it's only going to hit you twice as hard so I think once we can learn to appreciate that life is a series of ups and downs and that depending on you know if we're on the way up and we're comfortable or if we're on the way down and we're growing and learning and evolving I think we can begin to appreciate um, in this light you know whatever direction we are going and that will help us cope with it better you know if there are pressing circumstances and you're under the water like I find myself sometimes don't think this is the end and you know I'm rooted but remind yourself that this is a part of life that life isn't about always being happy and content and at peace and fulfilled but it's also about feeling scared feeling vulnerable fearful hurt depressed stressed out angry frustrated hopeless in despair sorrowful woeful life is about experiencing the full spectrum of emotion the full spectrum of experience and that's all I expect out of life and that's what helps me get by through my bouts of depression through those downs until I'm back on top it's, it's rem remembering that life isn't about being happy life isn't about being content safe entertained it's not all about joy and, and rainbows and roses and you know butterflies but it's just about experience just experience pink and blue alike and what becomes of you as a, as a result of experience whether you become a more comfortable person or whether you grow either way it's a full spectrum of things to experience and I think it's all important so I think you know once you realize that it's not so much about what's happening around you and what's becoming of everything around you but the point of it is what becomes of you as a result of everything else as a result of the circumstances and the pressures and challenges is what becomes of you once you get through it and that's what I think is to me that's my way of life that's my perspective whenever I'm under the water whenever I'm feeling down is I remember hey this is what it's about and I'm gonna appreciate it you know the last thing you want to do is think that this is it or ignore your problems and what's depressing you or your fears and distract yourself with drugs or entertainment or company or whatever at the end of the day there is no way out of anything no way out of a situation no way out of a relationship no way out of uh, a problem you've got in, in your mind or in your heart or in your life there's no way out of any of this except through you're gonna face whatever it is knowing full well that it's all part of the game it's all part of life and you've got to face it and move through and then when you're on the other side you'll be all the wiser all the stronger for it which is why I chose the name Phoenix by the way
because you know I had a really hard point in my life where a good friend of mine perished when I was 12 years of age he was 11 and at that same time my dad had entered my life a year previous after a five year spell of also being depressed in a way and I moved in with my dad so what happened the same year I moved in with him my best friend one of my only friends because I was a bit of a loner a bit of a eccentric one from, a, from an early start um, he perished and it was really tough for me and I thought you know this is fucked and I read through my dad's because he was starting to be a psychologist so I read through his textbooks on, on psychology sexology everything and all about conditioning and how to recondition the mind and I, I practically set out from the age of 12 to become self-aware to objectively as much as I could assess myself and make some changes and adjustments and do some reconditioning and because of that I disassociated from my previous name and chose the name Phoenix from the age of 13 up um, I'm 26 now so I've had the name Phoenix for just as long as my previous name and to me I chose that name because at that point even then I realized that you know even when your friends pass away and you're going through real turbulent change and loss that at the end of the day it's all about growth the only change constant is change and you got to try your best just to come out better for it so it, I, I wanted to choose a name which I wasn't too you know like a name like John or Peter or Sam you know all these things it's like it's, it's, set, it's a set entity and everything that happens gets associated with that entity I wanted to choose a name that wasn't just a fixed label uh, and an idea of a personality or a person or an entity I wanted a name that represented change and adaptation and adjustment and evolution and so I chose Phoenix and that as a totem for me the Phoenix and taking that name upon myself and becoming Phoenix um, since then as it's generally been my way of life that I try to just adapt and make the best of the, the situation you know the pessimist complains that the glass is half empty the optimist you know is so grateful and praises that the glass is half full and meanwhile the opportunist just comes by and drinks the glass and that's what it is at the end of the day whether it's pressing times in your life whether you're in an up and everything's going swell that it's all perspective and at the end of the day you can take either viewpoint but you've just got to be the opportunist and take that glass and drink it and make the most of the situation and just evolve and evolve your game and realize that sadness happiness pain or pleasure you know growth or comfort it's all the same it's life thank you